Hi everyone. Recently Google have made some changes with Google Classroom. So what I'd like to do is just do an overview of what those changes are. And there are some really good changes that's going to make things a lot easier for teachers and their students when learning with Google Classroom. So let's dive in. So as you can see on the screen, this is the new Google Classroom. You've got up here a the stream and you've got now a new tab called Classwork and People. Now, if we go back to one of the older classrooms, we only have the stream and people. There used to be an about button here as well, but now, even in the old classroom, you'll find the about under settings, which is the cog there. Okay, so this is the about page. That's in the same place on the new Google Classroom as well. So you can click settings and there it is. Now in old Google Classroom, when you hovered over the plus in the corner, you get your announcement, assignment, question and reuse post items. In the new version, under stream, you've got create announcements and reuse post. So in your stream, it is only going to be announcements. If you want to create assignments, you then need to go to your classwork page. You've now got a new button that says create. So we can click on create and from here, you can create your assignment, you can create your question, you can reuse a post and you can create new topics. Now topics are very good. We had topics in the old classroom, but this is a new way of creating them. It's a really good way of organizing all of your assignments in your classwork tab. In people, on this screen, you can now also add and invite teachers. So before you would do this from the about page, but now you can do this from the people page. So you can click on invite, and then this is where you would invite the teachers that are gonna be collaborative teachers within your classroom. Again, you can do the same for students. You can invite the students here as well, but I must admit, I prefer to invite students by giving them the class code and then coming in themselves. So let's go and take a look at the settings now. So in the settings, this is where you will find the class code now. So on the class code, you can display this. You could go full screen if you want to, you can copy it, you can reset it and disable it. Here we've got the setting for students, whether you want them to post, comment, or whether only the teachers can post or comment. Showing deleted items, you can turn this on, and guardian summaries. At the top here, if you click on edit, this is where you can add more of a description to your classroom page. You may notice something missing from a new classroom. Now, if we go back to an old classroom, we can see this item here, add class materials, which I must admit, as a teacher, I found very useful for resources that we used constantly. Now, in the new classroom, you'll notice it's not here. Now, I've sent feedback to Google, and apparently this is on its way. So just watch out for this. It may appear similar to what it did in the old classroom, but um, it is on its way. Okay. Let's now look at the student view and see what the student sees. So this is a student version of uh, Google Classroom. So it's pretty similar. So they're gonna see the stream, uh, they're gonna see the classwork page. Okay, so it's gonna list all the classwork. Um, obviously they can't create assignments, so which a teacher can do. In the people page, they're gonna see all the teachers and the students within that page. In this particular classroom, there isn't any other students. If we go back to stream, the student, if you've turned on the ability for the student to actually post, then the student will be able to post within the stream, which I think is a really good feature if you're allowing posts in the classroom. It gives that controlled way of the children having learning conversations with each other. Let's go up to our three lines in the corner. And here we can see all the different classes that this child is actually belonging to. We've got the settings item down here. And this allows the student to change a lot of the not notification settings. As you can see, it gives the child the ability to change the profile picture and manage their password as well. However, these settings would be dependent on how the administrator has set up the domain. You can also find these settings in the teacher view as well. So let's have a look at the teacher view. Under here at the bottom, we've got the settings and you've got the same settings here for the teacher. Another feature that's been added is within the creation of assignments. So if we create an assignment here, um, 
like so. Now we've got this new option here that asks that says point. So we can give a point value to an assignment. We can also click it unmarked, which is fine as well. We've got the due date and topic as well if we want to add those. So that's all the same. This is a new feature here, this points element. So now let's look at some of the features of a new assignment. So I've posted a new assignment here as a teacher. Let's go over to the student view. Let's go to classwork and here you can see that assignment. So let's click on the assignment. And at the top here, you've now got this ability for the student to actually add a class comment. So you can click on a class comment here and you can add a comment to this assignment as a student. Okay, so let's add a quick comment here. And then you can see there that that has been added to the assignment. Okay, and up here we can see that class comment by clicking on class comment there. Let's click into the assignment. Let's add something to the assignment. Let's turn it in. Let's hand it in there. So all of that is very similar to what a student would have done in the past. So let's now go to the teacher view and see what the teacher sees. So let's go to the assignment. We can see here there's one that's been handed in. Let's click on that. We can see here this is the student's assignment. We can give it a grade out of 100. We can add a private comment, all of the things that we used to be able to do. But let's click into the assignment now. Now when we look at this page, it looks very different now from what it used to look like when a teacher marked the piece of work. The first thing I'd like to show you, this ability to go to the next student very easily. This, I always found a pain because I had to open up all of their assignments in the last Google Classroom. I find this very useful. So there's different ways now that we can comment on this. So we can do it the old way. We can say, okay, let's make a comment here. Let's say, and comment on that. But we've also got this ability now to add from a comment bank. If we wanted to add the same comment to lots of students piece of work we don't have to type it out constantly so we can click on comment back and add a comment so there's my first comment let's go back to the comment bank we can give this piece of work a score and here we can add a private comment within the document so rather than having to type all those comments out manually I can go to my comment bank I can say copy to clipboard and then paste in here. Okay, and then post. And there is our private comments. You can also do the same thing within Google Classroom and add your private comment here, which is what you used to be able to do. Now it's given you an additional way of adding private comments from within the assignment. And now what we can do is return it from within the Google document. Let's say return. Let's go back to the student view. We can see the comment here and we can see that they've given a mark and it's been returned. I think this new view here is going to be very useful for teachers. If you want to find a full list of the new features of Google Classroom, then go into Google Classroom itself. You can click on the question mark at the bottom and click on what's new. And that will give you a full list of what's happened to Google Classroom in recent months. This is August 2018, but you can go back to any date in the history of Google Classroom. While we're on the question mark, you can also add feedback here, ask a question and get help. The send feedback item is very useful if you want to send some feedback on a new issue that you might want to see in Google Classroom. So you can type in your description here, include a screenshot if you want and then send it away. So there we have it. They are some of the new features of Google Classroom. Thanks for watching. Please click the like button and please subscribe to this channel for more educational technology videos. Until next time, goodbye.